Oh, that was perfect timing. <laughs> Good morning and namaste. We love you all. How are you all? Good to have you on. Good to have you on. Let us get started with a morning prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you. We love you. We adore you so much. We just thank you for this opportunity to come before that mighty throne with bowed heads and humble heart. Just thank you for the gift of life that you've allowed us to see. Waking us up full of health, full of blessings, full of healings. We thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and our teacher, who teaches us all things. As we open up our hearts and minds to see this word, as we apply it to our lives, take it to a world that is good, holy, and beautiful. Bless all the churches in the world. We all teach and preach the same thing, that there be no division amongst us, to be in one accord, one another, in peace and in love. And we thank you for blessing over the homeless and their journey. Bless over those who had lost loved ones. Confer them, be with them, touch them. Bless over those who are going through financial hardship, that they have a breakthrough <clears throat> of wealth and abundance and prosperity. Bless over those who are going through trials of sickness, that you ask them to heal and they be healed. And we thank you for so many things, given us traveling grace to and from our destinations. And we just thank you for so many things. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, we are very bright with our yellow shirt. <laughs> I put it up on it the other day and my wife went, oh, that's really bright. I said, yeah, I'm <laughs> All right. Any praise reports? Yes, Pastor, we do. Everyone has a praise report. Mm -hmm. Who else go first? Adrian, you have one. We know you do. <laughs> Share one. Share one. Just a small one. We know you picked out your room. How does it look? <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. Very excited. I'm in like the top floor kind of quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, multiple windows. Yeah, multiple window windows. Window here. <laughs> you, got, uh, you got one of the best yeah. views in the house. Yes, yeah, it's going really nice. We also, another there. thing was, um, so when we planned uh, the move, so we're going to get the keys on the 28th, and then we're like, oh, we got to move during that day. Mm -hmm. That was um, basically in the middle of my busiest week because of exam season yes. and on the Monday, I'm going to have like three or four exams on that day. Perfect. And so it's very stressful because I have to plan to study and to move. However, okay. things have been changing a lot because yes. there we go. the exams have been shifted and moved around. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> and so it's more spread out because they're always having like, oh, the instructors are busy this day, so we have enough instructors. We're gonna have to move it. Okay, another exam. We're gonna have to move it. Yeah. And so it's been, uh, yeah, it's been working out. <laughs> well, the reason why I picked on you, at, all jokes aside, is because we sense that energy from you. Because look at the power. We had nothing to do with it. So we were joking. We said we're welcome. But that was a joke. But it was your fate that did it. Because everything is moving faster. When you set your intentions, hey, I really want to help the family, but I don't want to be bogged down with schoolwork or the stress of these tests, you know, and it allows me more time to study. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're already prepared, but all it's all good to fine tune. So thank you for sharing that. It was a great. All right. Thank you for letting us pick on you. Uh -huh. And that moving day means that in the morning he will uh, go to school from here. Mm -hmm. or when he's done with school, he will have to go home somewhere else. <laughs> He'll he go to the to new house. That. Don't take the wrong yeah. path, okay? <laughs> he'll, he'll take. He'll he'll go to the new house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he gets there, then he can help with the move. And then it'll be fun because now you all bring loving energy into a new space. Yes. This is a brand new home where nobody's lived in it. Now you can bring all the loving energy. So when everybody comes in there, they receive health, healing, wholeness, prosperity, abundance, peace, joy, happy. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, that wasn't for me. That was Holy Spirit. Anyway, any other praise report testimonies? We are so happy for y'all. Yes, Lily? We, we decided that we're not bringing our old furniture. So, so then I met, I, uh, I, 
I thought of a, a man who owns a used furniture shop. So then I called him and he came and he said, okay, I'll take all your furniture. How much will it be? And then I go like, you pay me or I'm paying you. And then he thought about it. He was very quiet. And I said, you can take them all for free. Okay. All right. <laughs> See, what a great barter exchange, yes? Yes. Now, here's the real question. How'd you know to find him? How'd you find him? Who told you and what voice got, oh, we gave it away, <laughs> universe. <laughs> I, I, well, I just thought of this person, right? And then, so I contacted him. How, how? The, it's just a thought that came uh, in. Yes. But think about it. You haven't contacted this person in years. Uh -huh. um, a few uh -huh. months, yeah. Uh -huh. The, the last time we, we did was uh, to last, last year. Last year, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was a year, correct. All right. Thank you. We're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was thinking, right, it's, it's really getting instantly, you know, mm -hmm. the yeah. when you need a, when you come across a problem and you need a solution. The, the main thing is you must ask for the solution and not stuck at the problem. So, okay, so I need to look for somebody who will do this for me or will help me. And then the answer will come really quickly. All right. Asking is what? Given. Ask. Adrian asked for help. It was given. Move my date out. Too easy. Now, all of a sudden, it's not your problem anymore. It's your professor's problem. Oh, we got a scheduling. Oh, we got to do this. Oh, we got our personal life. Oh, we got a staff meeting. Oh, we got this. We got that. Don't know you're the mastermind and everybody should be thanking you for that. <laughs> All right, any others? If not, page 1078. If you don't have page 1078, it is the state of sinlessness. Yes. Some people are gonna have a problem with that because they just love their sins. But for the moment, unconditional love looks at the state of what? sinlessness yes. Yes. does that make sense yes. yes when the master jesus came he says i'm about my father's business and if everybody made the connection that god is unconditional love his whole message was what love not the sin that you're doing he showed you the state of hey how to go from from a sin state to an error state to a sinless state the buddha did the same thing make sense Okay. So, question number one: What is the state of sinlessness? <laughs> Unconditional love. <laughs> Unconditional love. It's the it's the whole desire to attack that is gone. You know, when you have unconditional love, you don't attack anybody anymore. You don't judge anybody anymore. You meet them right where they are. That's that's real. The real state of sinlessness is really not attacking because every time people sin, there's an attack. Yes or no? Yes. All the ways. There's a judgment, there's a separation, then there's an attack. And it might not even be a physical attack, it'd be a verbal attack, where there be a disagreement within terms of religion, in terms of Christianity, in terms of philosophy, in terms of ideology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Yes. What is the difference between sin and error? Uh, there should be no sin <laughs> well think about how the church views sin sin is in their view condemnation to what hell fire and brimstone by a vengeful god but now the holy spirit looks at a sin as okay that's an error because god knows your heart he knows your thought we don't know so we look on the outside and we make a judgment based on our perception our belief our upbringing our philosophy, our ego, our super ego, whatever it might be. And then we attack that person. Mm. Oh, you're wrong. Oh, you're wrong. How dare you? If you're not part of this, or if you don't agree with the way I think in terms of why I believe, then you're wrong. Yes. And that's not love. I mean, it's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree, but most people disagree with so much anger, hate, and animosity. Yes. Either my way or no way. And people have actually separated friendships based on this religion of difference of beliefs <clears throat> based on sin and error. One has to crucify 
One has to be free. Nobody thinks about it that way. Question number three. <laughs> it's a doozy. Question number three. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to what? you to new understanding. Uh, to bring you, to educate you, to enlighten right. you. No, all of those are right. But we're going to give you a word. Oh, what's a good word? Mm, it's like, mm. <laughs> it starts with an I, ends with an E, and it is driven by an action. Oh, it's, it's voracious. Inspire. The Holy Spirit would inspire. Watch this. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to inspire you to new understanding, which can free you from what? Your mistakes. This is why you shouldn't stay in your mistakes long. This is why you learn from your mistakes. But sin, most people can't learn because there's so much judgment in it and they stay stuck in the judgment. And there's no forgiving. It's hard to forgive with sin consciousness versus Christ conscious. Christ conscious is unconditional love where I already know you're going to do that. So now would be the question of how would God go against his own word of giving you free will. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So will you will we'll mess with Lily for a little bit? The Holy Spirit came in and inspired you to a new understanding to call the person <laughs> that you hadn't talked to in a year to help you come and grab the furniture. It was a new understanding of how to listen, connect more with a deeper network, and then take action. Most people hear it and don't take action. All on deaf ears. Is that really me thinking it? Or is that somebody else thinking it? <laughs> um, I, I always think that it's important at the moment when you want to ask the question, you, you need to kind of uh, uh, shut down, I mean, be quiet yourself, and then give it a chance to give you the answer. Yes. Otherwise, you'll be distracted, right? You, you, we are all busy people, and, yep. and Holy Spirit is very soft. Yes. He, he whispers. There's no shouting, beating of the drums. There's no thunder, lightning, boatings. It's very, 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 very <laughs> subtle. Yeah, it's, none of the, it's none of the slapping. The Holy Spirit comes in very, very subtle, and very quiet when he wants to get your attention. There is no screaming. We're the only one who shouted, people. We want to shake them and, and force them, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, does, he doesn't do that. <laughs> he comes in very, very subtle with a whisper. Call, call this gentleman. You know what? I kept his number for a reason. I haven't talked to him in a year came at the right time because he couldn't afford to pay you. So it was a blessing to him to receive all this good furniture because your furniture is really good. So it's nothing wrong with your furniture other than you want new furniture. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you should have new furniture with a new house and a new car. Of course, more cars, more cars. <laughs> more cars, exactly. <laughs> How do you get to a state of sinlessness? How do you get to a state of sinlessness? How do you get to a state? How do you get to where Christ was? How do we get unconditional love? Unconditional love the neighbor, yeah. love the love your enemy. Oh love. man. Oh, so you you that's that's the hard one right there. Cause uh, when the enemy comes, man, people want to go to war. They gotta they gotta bring out the weapons, and whether it be a physical weapon or the tongue. Uh, but when you understand that you don't have an enemy and you can see everybody in unconditional love as another version of yourself, now you can see them as Christ saw everybody else. This is how Buddha saw everybody else. This is why they were the enlightened ones. Ah, the state of sinlessness is merely this. The whole desire to attack is gone. Poof. And sir, there is no reason to perceive the Son of God as other than what he is. 
the Son of God. The need for guilt is gone because it has no purpose and is meaningless without a goal of sin. So now, watch this. <clears throat> guilt, in this sense, is associated with what? Sin. Mm. That's, that's pretty deep. I hope whoever sees this get that because they never connect the two. They never put it upon themselves. It's always the other person. I'm right, I'm wrong, but they never ever take a step back and say, let me look at it from your perspective. This is why, this is why in, in the Bible, Jesus says, this is for the Jew first and all for, for the, for the, he was for both. He just didn't keep it to one nationality. <clears throat> Attack and sin are bound as one illusion, each the cause and aim and justifier of the other. Sin has to be justified, doesn't it? Yeah. Every time, every time. Each is meaningless alone, but seems to draw meaning from the other. Oh boy, yes it does. Each depends upon the other for whatever sense it seems to have. And no one could believe in one unless the other were true, were the truth, for each attest the other must be true. This is why it's always the finger pointing. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. It's always interesting that the people who always fight against the preachers. Hmm. Most time people, not you all, but most people will argue with the teachers when they've never taught themselves. We've met people like that, yes? <laughs> but yet they know everything. And because of that one thing that they don't understand, there's a disagreement with everything. It has to be a flaw. But that's not how the Christ conscious works. Judgment is often based upon previous experience. Look what they did. In, the, in my past, this is what they did to me. That person over there, I knew he, I, I, he, he looked like a pickpocket that I used to know. So he has to be a pickpocket because his eyes are too close together. <laughs> now that they're too close together, they have to be a pickpocket. <laughs> by, by association, they are pickpockets. <laughs> you, what, guilt by what? Association. Uh, <laughs> Don't even know that person and pass the judgment. How many times have people judged the homeless person for being homeless and got embarrassed when they went to offer help to the homeless and the homeless denied them? And they went, you're not gonna take this, you're not, and the homeless person got an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> a high class homeless person. <laughs> well, let me let me tell my story. <laughs> let me tell on me. <laughs> I'm good at that. I perceived in judgment that this person was homeless based on what he looked, what he was wearing, looked like he didn't shave, shower, didn't have the means, was walking barefoot. So in my mind, I'm thinking homeless. I go to offer assistance. He says, no, I have a home. I live up the street. I just took my shoes off because these shoes hurt my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> but based on my past experience of seeing someone that appeared that way, I assumed that that person was also homeless. homeless. Come to find out his home was bigger than my home. <laughs> <laughs> but you never judge a book by its covers because judging is often based on what? Previous experience. Your idea about a thing or a person derives from a prior idea about that thing or person. 
see the prior idea results from a still prior idea and that idea from another idea and so forth and so on like a building block until you get all the way back in the hall of mirrors to what the holy spirit calls the first thought all thought is creative and no thought is more powerful than the original thought that is why this is sometimes called the original sin original sin is when your first thought about a thing or a person is an error that error is compounded many times over when you have a second or a third thought about a thing or a person it is the job of the holy spirit to inspire you to new understanding which can free you from your mistakes <clears throat> attack makes Christ your enemy and God along with him. Must you not be afraid with enemies like these? And must you not be fearful of yourself? For you have hurt yourself, not you all, and made yourself your enemy. And now you must believe you are not you, but something alien to yourself and something else, a something to be feared instead of loved. Yeah. When people will want fear instead of love because they perceive love is what weak every master who was came here they thought they were weak but come to find out quickly they were the opposite and was very strong <clears throat> who would attack whatever he or she perceives as wholly innocent wow wouldn't that be a concept if i thought of everyone innocent hmm yeah. but that's how that's how God thinks though hmm. and who because he or she wishes to attack can fail to think he or she must be guilty to maintain the wish while wanting innocence but who could see the son of God is innocent and wish him dead Christ stands before you each time you look upon your brother and sister he has not gone before your eyes he has not gone because your eyes are closed, but what is there to see by searching for your savior, seeing him through sightless eyes? <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes. Can someone read the next one really quick? It is not Christ you see by looking so. It is the enemy confused with Christ you look upon. Mm. And hate because there is no sin in him, and join with him in innocence and peace. And yet, beneath the ego's senseless streak, such is the call that God has given him, that you might hear in him his call to you, and answer by returning unto God what is his own. Wow. Then that makes perfect sense. And now you understand why he was crucified, partly. Yeah. Mm. On another, you know what I'm saying? Yes. He was innocent, but look, at, they perceived him as what? enemy yes all he did was bring a message of love all he did was bring a message of forgiveness all he did was bring a message of peace and all they did was attack him <laughs> yes I, I think uh previously um we often experience um that people kind of like uh, look down on us just because we have our certain way of doing things like you know why are you vegetarian you know stupid meat is tasty blah 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 <laughs> yeah. so we kind of get used to it that oh we are abnormal but abnormal in a normal way that it should be for you know um it should be the right way that should be the right way. what really happens is when when people are approaching your <clears throat> beliefs your lifestyles, they're really questioning their own. Oh, okay. Think about it. Why would they have such an interest in you being a vegetarian or a Buddhist or whatever? How does it benefit them? It doesn't. Who cares? Who cares if they eat meat and you eat vegetables? So what? They eat vegetables too. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the best thing, Pastor, finally when we get to Canada, Guess what? Everybody is respectful about however you live your life and how whatever you want to eat. Yep. Now here, in some places, not every place, you get attacked for that. 
because now there's a the debate between the vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian. Oh, now there's a big old fight between who's right and blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, how does what I do affect you? Should be the real question. Yes. And the real answer to the other person, it shouldn't because I have my own belief, I have my own journey. What you do should never affect me. We can agree to disagree because I have my own belief, you have yours. I don't have to attack you for your beliefs and don't attack me for mine. Does that make sense? Yes. Most people attack because of fear too, because now they were taught an apple a day does what? Keep the doctor away. <laughs> hmm. So now the only time those who try to get away from the meat is very hard because it's not a discipline for them. Because they put in their mind, I can't survive without the protein. I cannot survive without my steak. I cannot survive without my chicken. I cannot survive without da 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 da. They built up this thing that I can't live just on vegetables. But now look at the gorilla. Not to, but just side note. Look at the gorilla. Look at the gorilla. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at how big that thing is. Uh -huh. What does it eat all day? Plants. Yes. All day long. It eats. So you mean to tell me this big old. <laughs> <laughs> when they care, this big <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, we like to tell you know, people, look at the elephants too, right? They, yeah. so they, they don't eat meat. You know? Thank you. Look at that elephant. Uh -huh. Right? Me. But it's again going back to people's judgment. Yeah. And it's always a reflection about themselves. Always. Anytime there's a judgment about you, remember it's a judgment about themselves. Always. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Where are we at? Oh, the Son of God asks only this of you that you return to him what is his due, that you may share it in it with him. Alone does neither have it, so it must remain useless to both. Together, it will give to each an equal strength to save the other and save themselves along with him. Forgiven by you, forgiven by you. What's the key word? Forgiven, 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 forgiven. People can't, it's hard for people to forgive. Oh, you're a vegetarian. How dare you not? Oh. <laughs> There, there are people who even ask you, do you think you are holier than me? I said, no, not in any way. <laughs> Let's flip it to religion. You're you, you, are, you are a Buddhist, and then they will say you should be a Christian, or you should be Islam, or you should be this, or you should be that. Yeah. Everybody has their own thinking of what you should be instead of what they should be. They're more worried about you than themselves. Yeah. That makes sense? So yes. now the goal is to change you. And then when they can't change you, then they judge you and then they separate you and then they attack you either verbally or physically. Yeah. Now let's switch it over to even race. We don't like you because you're Asian. We don't like you because you're black. We don't like you because you're Indian. We don't like you because you're this. We don't like you because you're Egyptian or Filipino or blah, 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 blah. It's a fear. Everything in judgment is fear. Does that make sense? Yes. by you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Condemned by you, he offers debt to you. Oh, oh, I don't want that. And everyone you see, but the reflection of what you choose to have him be to you. Everything is a mirror. Judge not be judged. When I start judging something, I have to say that's a mirror myself. And people don't want, people don't like that mirror. <laughs> if you decide against his proper function, the only one he has is in truth, you are depriving him of all the joy he would have found if he fulfilled the role God gave to him. But think not heaven is lost to him alone, nor can it be regained unless the way is shown to him through you, that you may find it walking by their side. Love your enemy. I the now, let me say this. I didn't say go hang out with them and be best friends with them, but I got to love them. 
because they're not there yet. You're there yet. They're not there yet. So now here's the only thing that will really apply where I can love you from a distance because they're not there yet. It does not apply. Oh, I got to love you, but I ain't got to like you. <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> Don't use that as an excuse. <laughs> it is no sacrifice that he be saved or they be saved, but by their freedom will you gain your own. To let their function be fulfilled is but the means to let yours be fulfilled also. And so you walk toward heaven or toward hell, but not alone. How beautiful his sinlessness will be when you perceive it. If people could understand Christ's sinlessness, how beautiful would they understand and perceive it? And how great will your joy be when they, his is free to offer you the gift of sight God gave him for you. He has no need but this, that you allow him freedom to complete the task God gave to him. And as you see him, so do define the function he will have for you until you use him differently and let him be what God appointed that he be to you. Against the hatred that the Son of God may cherish toward himself is God believed to be without the power to save what he created from the pain of hell. Isn't that beautiful? Be different if somebody else in the religious world would grasp that <clears throat> but in love he shows himself as god made free to let his will be done and your brother or sister you see the picture of your own belief and what the will of god must be for you in your forgiveness will you understand his love for you through your attack believe he hates you thinking heaven must be hell but once again upon your brother and sister not without the understanding that he or she is the way to heaven or to hell as you perceive it but forgive not this this role you give to him because it is your judgment on yourself and that ends it Questions, comments concerns pretty simple well I'm not just, i just thought of something about how how they they uh guilt people into uh to submission or into uh, by saying that uh, money is evil so you cannot you cannot accumulate too much for yourself so by all means do uh, do arms do a donation or whatever they give you into that you know money is <laughs> and isn't it interesting it's always the people that's lacking in money and poor and have financial problems that always say that yeah you never hear wealthy people say that. I've, <laughs> I've, never heard, I've, never, I've never heard a billionaire say, oh, the money is the root of all evil. I've never heard Oprah win. I've never heard no. Well, in fact, in fact, to them, to them, money can be used to do good. Absolutely. It's a tool. It's a tool, yeah. either evil or good. It's a tool. It's a necessary tool on this planet that you all created to institute a system of barter. Make sense? But now the church put evil on it because now if it's so evil, then I should not give you my tithes. Oh no, whoa, 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 Pastor. Whoa, whoa. We didn't mean like that. Opposite. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. We, we, we be buying things. Oh, so now I gotta live in a raggedy house. I gotta drive a raggedy car. I gotta put on poor clothes. Really? No, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna live according to how God blessed me. I'm not going to live over those means and I'm going to live under those means. I'm going to live within the blessing and I'm going to enjoy the blessings. Yes. You'd be surprised. Watch this. We're going to say something interesting that we've never said. And I guarantee you, most people, most people, unless they've been homeless, won't appreciate that when they take a shower or a bath, they don't tell the shower, thank you. But now ask that homeless person, about a shower who wants to shower yes. he'll be in there oh thank you thank you thank you thank you oh thank you thank you yes. 
Now there's cleanliness. We get in there and won't even say thank you. That, I paid the bill. <laughs> Free. I have all the, the luxuries of privacy. I couldn't tell the shower, thank you. You know, Jesus spoke to a tree and it hurt him. We can't speak to the shower. Say thank you. Thank you for providing water. What if it only produced cold water in the winter? Oh, now we start complaining about the cold shower. <laughs> now we forget about the homeless person who can't shower in the winter that he would love, not we won't say love, but he would figure out and appreciate that cold shower. Yes. Because he's already been in hardship where we been nice and comfy. And now cold water comes in and oh no. Where's the plumber? <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. So we have to really be appreciative. Of just the small things. Just to go out and get simple clothes. Just to take that that bite of food. That sip of water. Just to go to the bathroom and be able to wipe yourself and flush your toilet. Man. How many times have you seen homeless people on the side urinating and defecating on the side of the road and we're covering up our children and we're almost throwing up? Right? <clears throat> but yeah, we never thank the toilet. We never thank the toilet paper. We never thank them for not being backed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go down, go down. <laughs> All right, so you get the idea, yes? Yes. <laughs> All right, we will bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And we are so excited about your journey on the 28th and your new journey as you pick new apart, uh, new furniture and new cars and those things. Who wants to lead us in prayer? Anyone? 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 <laughs> okay. I love it. Let me do it. Uh, um, thank you, Heavenly Father, uh, for a wonderful uh, session today. We learn a lot uh, how to be sinless nurse yes. and uh, we will continue uh, our everyday with unconditional love uh, yes. not not seeing anyone that is sinful anymore <laughs> yes and free free ourselves and free others okay. uh, from being sinful yes. and uh, let's um, all of us uh, Put our heart together to create the good, holy, and beautiful. Yes. And have a wonderful week ahead. And we will see everybody next week. Yes, indeed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, friendly reminder. Tomorrow we're going to Zoom. We got the, um, we have the revival tomorrow. that starts at 7. So I'm going to send out the normal Zoom link. Mm -hmm. And my son is going to record it from their building. So... If you're free to be on, we'd love to have you on. Um, I probably won't get into the pulpit until about 7.15-ish. Not sure how the program is going to be laid out or how many songs, et cetera. But we will start at 7 o'clock um, over there. So don't be surprised. <laughs> all right. And you know what? We love you all. <laughs> Thank you. Love you, too. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye, all. Bye.